What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today I have a special video. I'm really excited to review this fragrance. This comes from the house of Marc Antoine Barrois from Paris. He's a clothing designer, I believe. But a couple years ago, he partnered up with Quintin Biche from uh, Givaudan to come up with a line of perfumes. This is the fifth one in their line. Although they have three originals, Ganymede, uh, B683 and Ancelade. Ganymede got an x straight version and then so did B63. So um, currently these are like the higher up. So they jumped straight to x straight. Um, this is a 50 mil bottle, um, very reflective uh, packaging here with the back here saying the, the story of how they kind of came up with their their friendship and and their uh perfumes so i'm just gonna leave this here for a second and then here we have the bottle uh seal of authenticity um the traditional you know cardboard box but i'm gonna go ahead and open this and show you guys what's inside so here is uh, a little bit more firm cardboard, very nice blue, uh, pretty uh, nice packaging. Um, this fragrance is not cheap. Retail is about 400 USD with tax for 50 mil, which um, you know, is hefty price tag for, for most uh, and here's the bottle um, comes with this little booklet here as well um, has I think their fragrances and uh, that Ganymede won some awards back in 2020 the original one not, not that extra eight. and then just a, a few blurbs about their other perfumes uh, but a little bit about uh, Quentin Biche before we get started um, like I said earlier, he's from Givaudan. He's done a couple of very popular perfumes. He's had over 100 fragrances in his catalog, but the main ones that kind of st stand out to me that I've experienced is uh, One Million Parfum, and then you have uh, JPG. He did Lamelle Le Parfum and Elixir uh, most recently. He also did a bunch of other ones for Jean Paul, a bunch of other like Le Mal flankers. Um, he did a bunch of Mugler Angel Flankers, PDM Delina, uh, and their Flankers, Azara Wanted by Night, and then, of course, the rest of this one, which includes five fragrances, along with many other brands that, that uh, we don't have to get into, but he's done a lot of perfumes for the brand. I think he's been working since 2010, so roughly that equates to 10 fragrances a year. Um, so he's, he stays pretty busy and just recently started working a lot more again. So um, so this Ganymede x is a 2023 release. I believe it came around, you know, first quarter or second quarter, somewhere around there. I did not blind buy this, although I would have, but um, I did have a chance to smell it. A couple months ago in Dallas at the scent room I popped into the scent room to kill some time before I made a, a friend up for drinks and I was trying all kinds of fragrances um, different brands you know I was trying zoologist and uh, listen to Modal. I was really looking forward to uh, put Julie Mosette but they didn't even have it yet at that point so I kind of just browsed around and experienced some other fragrances up at the top of the shelf I I saw this cold bottle and uh, I recognized the name Ganymede, so I tried it on and, and this one I really loved. It was one that I sprayed on a, on a card and I ended up keeping that card. Along with another fragrance that I also absolutely fell in love with and that's Roja Parfums Diagolev. Those two are the ones that stood out to me during my visit at the scent room and those are the two that I kind of just kept sniffing the cards on. Long story short. Um, I couldn't stop thinking about Ganymede x and decided to swoop in and get a bottle. Um, so I sprayed this on earlier on my wrist 
um, just to kind of get that dry down going because this is a kind of like a two-part fragrance. Um, that Ganymede there is a little see-through so you can see the juice inside. And just reflect the butt all around. So I did spray this earlier, like I said, um, just to kind of let it settle on my skin. Um, the beginning notes are very, um, I don't, I, I'm not going to say they're, they're hard for me to process, but I can see why it, why a lot of people struggle with this one. Um, but first and foremost, top notes are incense, myrrh, mandarin orange. Middle no notes are Immortel, and then at the base you got Akigala Wood and Safferline. And at the base, Akigala Wood and Safferline are trademarked for Givaudan, so they're um, synthetic molecules that they have, you know, created, and people can use them here and there, but uh, mainly Givaudan people use it. Um, I could be wrong though, I don't know if it's exclusively for them, but I know you, you can purchase and uh, samples online as well for those. Um, Akigala wood apparently um, Quentin Beach uses a lot in his fragrances and it's a note that's almost patchouli-like and has a hint of pepper and agar wood which is I think you know oud. Um, the oud's not very prominent in this fragrance, in my opinion, but there's not, it's not also not even listed on there, so um, it's not as uh, woody, I wouldn't say, at least not in the beginning. Um, so first couple, you know, 30 minutes to an hour are very spicy, sour, and uh, very resinous at the beginning. And I say spicy and sour because it reminds me of tamarind. So for those of you who, who don't know, tamarind is a fruit. Um, they come from these beans from a plant. And it's really popular in Mexico, um, but I believe it originated from Africa from what I read. But this fragrance does remind me a lot of that, which I love because tamarind is used in a lot of dishes, but also in a lot of candy. And those candies are usually, you know, sour, um, where your cheeks kind of pucker. Um, it's a little sweet. It's spicy because it's combined with a bunch of other spices as well to, you know, give you that... Um, that classic candy feel and i'm not talking spicy like jalapenos or you know um any other of those peppers but just like um i don't know if you guys have tried tahine but that type of spice like very candy like um no heat at all but just um makes your like lips like makes you lick your lips i guess um but that's what this reminds me of, especially for the first part. Um, and like I said earlier, that doesn't last the whole way through um, as, the trick, as the fragrance goes down. Hours and hours go by and, you know, it, this does project quite a bit for the first three to four hours. And those first three or four hours, I'm kind of cautious on who I'm next to or who I approach because this can be very strange or I guess it is very strange. Um, just yesterday I wore this out as well and I was shopping around and I went to a record store just, you know, looking for things. And every time I, I, I was next to a person, I kind of backed away a little bit because I felt like I was going to offend them or, you know, something like that. But no one, no one has said anything in my, you know, 10 plus wearings of this. No strange comments or anything like that. So, um, it must smell good in there. And I've, I've put this in my carbon as well to kind of, you know, get whiffs of it. 
and uh, I think it's pretty fun. Um, this currently is rated about 3.6 or 3.7 on for for Grantica. Um, those reviews are kind of hilarious to to see and to read, um, just because not everyone agrees with this. A lot of people say that the original Ganymede is, you know, better. I haven't experienced that, but if I love this, um, I'm definitely gonna love the original. And I do plan on getting the other fragrances in this line. Um, Atomizer is also really, really good. I'm gonna spray this on my wrist. And it, this is very Dior-like where you kind of adjust the pressure and you can kind of, you know, do a half spray or quarter spray, but let's see. So nice mist there. And then you have a nice top here too. So like I said, very, very warm too. Um, to me, it's very cozy. I, I've worn this to sleep a couple times and when I wake up, I still smell it. Um, does last very, very long on, on the clothes. Um, on the skin, it kind of, you know, whether it's a little bit more and you do get a little bit of changes here and there. Um, the most interesting part of this fragrance goes on to the the mid notes and the the dry down, like the the very very end. Uh, mid notes get very very um, almost like heavy cumin, you know, body odor, and that might put some people off because at that point, you know, if you've made it this far along into the fragrance um, and you can handle the first part wait till you get to the second part the second part's a little more you know <laughs> rugged it can get you can get whiffs of some nasty smelling things um, so if you're not used to um, you know cumin or if you don't like m heavy musks then you will not like this fragrance at all um, but if you are a fan of strange fragrances, uh, musks, and just things that you've never, and I don't wanna say things that you haven't smelled before, but you know, this is something I haven't smelled before and I've experienced a lot of fragrances, but this is very strange, um, but it's my type of fragrance. I love Ganymede Extrait. I wore this when I got it, I wore it three days in a row and I posted on my Instagram story that this has climbed up to my top 10 fragrances of all time. And then I also said maybe even top five. And um, it, I believe that still holds true. I do like this. I really, really like this. Um, I wouldn't mind wearing this every day if I could, you know, afford 50 ml bottles all the time, but um, just like all my other fragrances, it's gonna take turns wearing it. I've worn it in the heat and I've had no problem with that. We've had something like 90 plus days of 100 degree weather, uh, Fahrenheit that is um, this summer. And I still wear all my winter fragrances, you know, quote unquote winter fragrances. And I enjoyed every single one. Um, and I forgot to mention, but that that the mandarin orange here, yeah, at the top is the one that provides you know that that uplifting feeling. Um, so whereas most of the fragrances down here, there's some mandarin orange that kind of you know balances everything out. And if that wasn't in there, then then yes, this would be a different story. Um, this would be a very you know, exclusive, um, like certain day type of fragrance. But since that orange is there, I can see how anyone can wear this, or not anyone, but how you can wear this any occasion and, you know, still pull it off. Cause it does have, you know, that bright orange in there. Um, as I was saying earlier, the musk in here, sorry guys, if I'm all over the place, but and the, 
the musk in here is very dirty and to me when when the first wearing i wore this i i really experienced that that dirty aspect to the max and i was kind of you know excited about it because um of another fragrance that i have here so this Musk Ravageur, released in 2000. Apparently when they were testing this fragrance out, you know, in New York subways, the original formula was very, very skanky and dirty. And they were wearing it in the, you know, in the subway and testing it out to see if people liked it. But uh, Frederick Mall described it as very skanky and off-putting, you know, to the point where they had to tweak it. And that story kind of reminds me of, of Ganymede Extrait, where, you know, this is a very unapologetic perfume. It's not meant to please, you know, it's meant to be appreciated by certain people. And that's, that's where my mind goes when I'm wearing Ganymede Extrait because it's musky in the middle, um, spicy, warm, um, not very, hmm, not very cozy for the most part, like, but it is almost therapeutic um, with the incense. I love incense. Um, so it can be therapeutic that way. Um, in my opinion, musk ravageur is not, you know, very musky at all, especially these late formulations this is very gourmand in my opinion uh, beautiful vanilla and musk um, still a little slightly dirty but i really wish i got to experience that um, we're almost approaching the 20 minute mark so let me hurry up here um, if and then another fragrance that came to mind when wearing ganymede x-ray was music for a while and the reason i say that because this one's also very, very strange. Um, nothing like um, that you've smelled before. You know, this one's has a lot of lavender, pineapple, um, very strong too. You know, this projects like crazy, um, but this is another very off-putting fragrance for most people. Um, me on the other hand, I love this. I love wearing this one. It's super fun. And I also, I believe I talked about music for a while in another video too, where I also said it reminded me of another Mexican candy. Um, these uh, pineapple candied lollipops with, you know, tahini on it. So another spicy, um, fruity, resinous fragrance, you know, or candy. And so pretty soon I'm gonna combine these two together and wear them at the same time. I'm not gonna do it today because I'm about to head to the movies and I don't wanna, um, you know, make everyone walk out. Uh, but that's my quote unquote review on Ganymede x or my experience with it. I really enjoy it. I can't wait to try out all the other uh, fragrances in the line. Next one up that I'm gonna get is b 683 x straight um, but Long story short, if you made it this far, I enjoy this. If you like strange fragrances or like to stand out or even like just, you know, spicy resinous perfumes, maybe if you, if you even like incense, um, definitely get your nose on this. It's something to experience. If you've tried anything else from the line, let me know what's, what's worth checking out. I know there's only five, but um, glad to have this in my collection and I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.